Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It Down. Now let's check out the tent. Come on, get in. The warm stuff's getting out. Squeeze in. All right, what do we got going on here? It smells like sweat and laundry detergent, plus a trace of ether, or ether. Canister is filled with what appears to be water. The label says distilled. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. A pile of nasal sprays, brand name Nosafed Ultra. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shake his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my posse, Noid. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. Uh, an egghead. Egg! The tape player high above his head continues to blast what is probably anodic music. Together with a little burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Wait, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Artists are for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shithole. I, I apologize for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. He has authority issues. Uh, there's no need. The place is pretty bad. Which brings me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dopeheads and burnouts if left unattended. Dopeheads! Burnouts! Angrily spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map of one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershol. Strike that! The road! And sad yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there were the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. Uh, what kind? The spooky kind. What exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just wanna spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. He turns to you. I'll look into it. Uh, tell me more. All right, man. He claps his hands enthusiastically. Andre's obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. Did you put the padlock on the door? Yes. I asked Noy to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. It's a temporary fix, just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in an hurry. Not my best work, but it should hold for a while. What about the key? Of course. Noy, give the officer the key. All right. Now the speed freak dips into his belt pack and produces a yellow key. Uh, he then makes a sudden, cool-infused move, tossing it in your general direction. Not one in four chance. Be the cool cop. Catch the key as it flies toward you. It's as if time has frozen somehow. You think you can sense the key moving in the air. Yeah, this is going to be way cool. And don't ruin the cool by overdoing it. 
Raise your hand in front of your face with minimum effort. Blam! Straight in the eye. Straight in the old eye hole. In the looking bowl. <laughs> A stabbing pain. Tears stream uncontrollably from your right eye. Ouch. Gosh darn, jerk. What is wrong with you? Can you see I'm in pain now? Man, I'm super sorry. That was totally my bad. I got overexcited. Threw him too hard. I'm sorry. He looks like he's genuinely sorry. He didn't throw them better. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Bend your face in mockery of his useless contrition. He almost eye murdered me. A cop. That's use of lethal force. I really am sorry, man. Just take this, okay? He pulls out some black pepper, or sorry, some black paper from his belt pack. Wow, looks like there's quite a lot there. Uh, should I take the money here? I don't think that I should. Yeah. Hmm, I kind of want it this time. And it's not a bribe, so, you know, that's the least you could do. Take the money. I hope that settles it. Or wait. Oh, that's, holy crap, 25. The key? He cautiously hands you the yellow key ring. He is shifting in his spot, uncomfortably, still feeling sorry for the mishap. We were talking about the padlock, I think. How long have those people been locked in there? Not long. Like a week, maybe? He shrugs. How can you be sure they haven't starved to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90%. Maybe 85% sure they're still alive. <laughs> Somewhere in the ruinous past that led you here, there was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Andre, do you know what involuntary manslaughter means? Yes, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. I know about crime stuff, and I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on. Most people aren't ever that alive in their entire lives. What does that even mean? I don't know. What does anything mean, really? He pauses to think. Oh, yeah. He looks at his friend with an expression of profound understanding. Yeah, sounds like nonsense. You're right. It is nonsense. Total garbage. I knew you'd see through it. You're one smart cop. I get by. Now, where was I with that padlock? He nods attentively, ready to answer the questions of one smart cop. Right. Other questions. Sure, man. Tell us what you want to know. Let's do it. Who exactly are these people inside the church? The truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't even seen them, and you want the police involved. Well, there's also the machinery. He leans in for emphasis. This machinery is of the deeply mystical variety. When I first scouted the place, back in February, it was abandoned, empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there are all these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, and it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Felt like silence. Awful silence. For this man, even regular silence is awful enough. But that was something greater. But you haven't physically seen anyone. Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think is a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. And we felt someone or something eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. What was that about something watching you? Like you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. Not human, as in a ghost. Do you know what he means? It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. A crab man? Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling, like a crab. It was stalking a cell, exhibiting ambush behavior. <laughs> Odd, crabs are usually marine creatures and not known for climbing walls. Are you sure there was a crab man? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it, 
Her cell was alone that time, but I believe her. If she comes out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. You should ask her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. Can you tell me more about this machinery? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and dopehead sign from them. Probably jacked up to some snuff station too. Probably very likely. With a small surge of PEA, alertness fills you. As if to say, this is a dark corner. Look behind it. Jacked up to some snuff station. It means like one of those rich boy private radio stations where you can listen to people getting killed on and jerk off to it. Sick shit. Oh, like the uh, dice maker told us about. Not that we would know anything about that. Noid just likes to relay stuff. He appears sincere enough, sire. You could of course be wrong. We're getting derailed here. In short, you can tell to Noid about the machines. He'll tell you more. So how can you be sure they're burnouts and dope heads, if you haven't even seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. This is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Basically, he is attempting to weaponize idiocy. I don't see a single thing wrong with that argument. Uh, wow, you can't. But you do. I should add weaponized idiocy to my own repertoire. Hey now, I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. He furrows his brow. Don't let all that technology fool you. Where do you think the drugs come from? He makes little quotation marks with his fingers when he says technology. I like how he keeps throwing percentages at me. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of people that throw out percentages like that when they don't know what they're talking about to make their arguments sound more substantial. At least I'm like 90% sure that's what people do. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about something else. Sure. What? You mentioned some kind of Ecclesiastes on the church. Now, who are these Ecclesiastes? Oh yeah, that's a meteor and name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. If you don't know what the founding party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. Uh, before we go on, what do you mean by Meteorin? You know, of Meteo. Concerning Meteo. A uh, mask it. Now hear me, Andre. What is the founding party? Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up, you know. I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organization. And? And they have roots in ancient mass society. And they're the custodians of the Pericanesian church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like, made the innocentic system, no? He pauses. Now, Andre, in your opinion, with this ancient religious organization who anoints the innocents, won a club for anodic music in one of their churches? Totally. There isn't a trace of doubt in his voice. The Pericanesian church is about love. Anodic music is about love. I got love for my Pericanesian posse. Love is the relay out of death. We dance. He violently shakes the tape player, as if to see he can break it. Love is hardcore. Unity. Unity. Make some noise for my Insulindian posse. He turns the volume up, uh, then looks at you with a knowing nod, as if it's obvious you would now break into dance. You feel it. The anodes and the cathodes coursing through you. Your big toe starts tapping along to the base, as if testing the waters. No words. Enjoy the beat. Nod your head. Feels good. I don't quite understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? Your posse's like your people, man. Like you got your cup posse. You look out for each other and you party together. That's a posse. And where is your posse, detective? Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. It sounds like you're just saying random things. Love, posse, make noise. Are we? He looks at you mysteriously. Yeah! The one with the large head really enjoys when his friend gets mysterious. Yeah, I guess love can be pretty hardcore. Oh yeah! It can! He's coming around! You're getting it! He nods at his friend, then turns to you with a mischievous grin. And I understand it was lame of me to suggest otherwise. Anodic music is about love, and so is the Perikanasian church. Yeah! Yako Qatar! The place to be! He 
seems ecstatic that you share his vision of pericarnesianism. Do it for the masses. Do it for the crew. His friend forms a fist with a screwdriver still in his hand. Approvingly so. I didn't want to say it, but it was pretty lame of you to imply otherwise. Anyway, you got more questions? The one with the large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. I wanted to ask you about this tent full of equipment. Yes. What? I see you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah. Good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first scattered the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled too. Uh, oh. He doesn't know what to say. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. It's like he's lying to you, my liege. But he's slippery enough that there's nothing for you to grab hold of. Hate to tell you, but it reeks of sweat in here. It does, doesn't it? Told you we have a smell problem. He picks up a piece of a telephone cord and inspects it. Wait, I also smell ether. Why? Ether? I don't smell ether. Do you, Noid? No. It's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent, like laundry detergent. He sniffs the air, then shrugs. A shrug is good enough for us. Why say it when you can shrug it? Oh, what's, what's with all that nosafed? The what now? He leans in to hear you. Yeah, he leans in to hear you better. Point at the bottles of nasal spray in the corner. The nosafed ultra. You have a lot of it lying around. Oh, the old ultra. We, um. He's like an actor looking to the souffle for his line. I have a major sinus infection. Stuffy nose. We all do. Shit's all blasted up. Winter. Can't even breathe. You sound fine to me. He's gonna say it because of the nosafed. Yes, that's all nosafed's doing. Without the noser, I'd be drowning in shit right now. He nods energetically. Nosafed is the shit. Uh, can I have some? I have uh, some nose problems too. Um, sure. Here you go, officer. The noser. Blast the way. He picks one up from the corner and hands it to you. Good, we have an extra health now. Uh, alright, enough of this. He nods enthusiastically. No doubt, a little relieved. Oh, that's it for now. As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah! That's not what this said. Eh, it's fine. Alright, let's see if we can boost our logic real fast. Alright, I think this is gonna do it. We only have like 20%, I think. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? He looks excited. The tips of his hair are sharp and white. The bleach has consumed almost all of the toothbrush on the mirror in front of him. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. Well, first of all, you're a smart cop. And a smart cop like you would understand if something wasn't quite right. So this should be easy. Mm-hmm. Rub your chin. Uh, what's the gist of it? The gist of it is, they want to turn the church into a club. But a suspicious element has overtaken the building. It's very important to understand what the gist of things is. Always consult the gist before making up your mind. This is going well. <laughs> Plus, and it has to be considered, you can't invent the future of dance music in this smelly old tent. Imagine if you had the church. That settles it. Analysis complete. Their story checks out. As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah! So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid. Good. Our skin shows through the holes in the Speed Freak's too large sweater. In front of him, 
An open toolbox full of carpentry tools and parts. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. He runs his hand through his hair, which is combed back in mock seriousness, and continues to fiddle with some gears. Sign. Yeah, gotta compare. See if we can align. Interesting. I suck at socializing, man. Even now, our sign synchronization is way off. But I'll see what I can do. He continues to rearrange his tools. I saw a sticker on the padlock. Can you tell me anything about it? A sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Interesting. He wants you to describe it, though he already knows what it looks like. Okay. It's a yellow circle, the human face, with X's for eyes and a smile underneath. I think the X's mean the guy is dead. Good, good. What did you want to know? He likes what he's hearing. Uh, was I right? Is it a dead guy smiling? Yes, you're the 23rd person to get it right, and I've asked 23 people. Looks like it's a dead guy smiling to the entire human race. And why do you think that's so? We're all the same. Same eyes, same smiles, same death. Okay, uh, what does it mean? He defeated history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie, and so are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. He thinks. Or drugged out of his mind, come to think of it. He could also be drugged out of his mind. Or drunk. Or in a clinical coma. All glad to be dead, but those versions suck. What makes the sticker so modern? Simplicity was brought to us by classical solarist modernism, but that was a tasteful, harmonious simplicity, right? Well, hardcore is not tasteful or outwardly harmonious. It's a warning shot. This will be dangerous. The echo of man's loss haunting him. The sticker, the clothes, the music, same thing. You come up with this stuff by yourself. Not alone. Many people are thinking the same thing right now. We all see the same smiling dead guy in a couple of X's in a circle. And a curve. The beat is the same for all. I think we've exhausted the subject for now. Well, I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? Uh, what about now? Are the signs alright now? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. What? You heard me. He examines a small metal bolt in his hand. Now tell me about the machines you saw in the church. Weird stuff. Specialized. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. He cringes. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign. Or some fucked up Samaran science sign. You know, the kind that goes head first into the supernatural. What's wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. You should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it though. The sickest. That's perhaps why it should be researched. The supernatural. So you think it's real? That it actually exists? Most of it doesn't exist. But there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. Psionic powers, pale-related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Why are you called Noid? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. He picks up some sort of a widget. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? Yes. Further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be by getting us into the church. Okay, maybe I'll come back later. A young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Walshy tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, 
as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous evangelical secret. Hot car! Is it? It's hot car! You're gonna keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? Skibba dee, skibba danger. I am the rearranger. <laughs> Could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? The young man with the tape recorder acknowledges your return. When he looks at you, he squints as though you were the setting sun. This is hardcore. Say nothing. Hardcore! Still say nothing. Hardcore to the mega! Say nothing. Internally coherent! Still say nothing. All car! All right! Yeah! Say nothing. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the stuffy tent. That's an agonized roar over the feeblish, obviously not too hardcore beat below. No, but seriously, I'm a little worried it isn't. The question is, what is the question? That would have been good if I had asked you a question, but I didn't. Now it's just idiotic. But there was a question? Back to the heavyweight jam! That says the young man with the tape player and the large bordero boots. Long shaped trees sprout on his silver belt buckle. Hot car! It's right. hot car! Skip a deep! I'm just getting out of that. Alright, let's talk to him again. Huh? I see you here again. Off sign, man. Did I mention getting us into the church without? He rummages through his tools. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Let's see, he looks excited. The tips of his hair are sharp and white. The bleach had consumed almost all of the toothbrush on the mirror in front of him. I don't know what has his signs. What's the deal with Egghead there? He's a quiet man, mostly communicates through music, and by being a master of ceremonies. How do you communicate with him? Well, he's just kinda here. I don't really know how to communicate with him. He shrugs. Have you ever really talked to him? Yeah, sometimes. When I like stumble and find my way into his center, you have to hear a lot of Hardcore to the mega first, though. The man smiles mysteriously, choosing to let the beat speak for itself. As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah! We're close. True, hard, full, car! Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega, internally coherent. I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenary hanging behind the Whirling and Regs ho uh, hostel. Good morning, yeah! One, two, three! Yeko Kata! The place to be! You said that before. Now, why is this Yeko Kata the place to be? What does that mean? Yeko Kata is a hardcore place! Yeko Kata is an abbreviation from the Gradian term Zone of Ecological Catastrophe, an agricultural mega project in the extreme southeast of the Gradian Isola. It involved cutting-edge approaches to irrigation and a completely new type of fertilizer. An intricate system of irrigation networks pockmarking the earth, intermittent seas of phosphorus mud, ripped tarpauling fluttering in the wind. A pair of molten rubber boots also comes to mind. All in all, a truly hardcore place. The clothes. True. Hard. Hardcore. But is it? I mean, really? Yeah! <laughs> this young man adds a capital G before the H in his Yeggs and Args. This produces a guttural Gutvaldian accent and makes him sound more animal, more in it. Or maybe it's not Gutvaldian. Maybe it's Oranese. Probably an homage to Oranie, where Arno van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno van Eyck creation right now? So this is the famous Van Eyck I'm hearing. You know about him? He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are the size of saucers. Looks like you've rendered him speechless. You know Van Eyck? Yeah, I made your egghead. Wow. The skinny wraith 
looks at you with some disbelief. So am I! So am I! He begins to shake his head so everyone would understand. Oh, is that why they call you Egghead? Because... Andre almost falls over backward from the realization. Egghead to the mega! The K became the G! The boy became the man! The advent? The clothes, true! Hardcore, hardcore to the mega! All right. Here comes the night. The true hard 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 cut internally coherent all car. All right. Yeah. Now please tell me, what exactly are you doing? Got to get the people going. Why? I'm the party boy. It's my job. Uh what is a party boy? Hardcore party 25/7 beyond the winter's orbit style. There is a place far away in Cutler. Beyond a certain latitude, known as Winter's Orbit, where there are 25 hours in a day. It is a tremendously cold place, abandoned to drunks and failed rock stars, full of eternite, depression, and half-finished ski-flying hills. The Suru live there. The clothes, true, hardcore, hard Alright, we're gonna keep exploring this dialogue hard tree until we... His brow. So hardcore. Is it though? He stops dead in his tracks, tilting his head to the side. It is. But is it? I mean, really. He tilts his head to the other side, like an owl. The question is, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns and starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. You said you were worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, Take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last month, and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Wow, culture cop! I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot think it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? No! This is the answer! Try to think of anything, try to think if anything could make it harder core. What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. He looks at you with some customary amazement. Think even harder. Oh yeah! He's doing it! But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. Yeah, my imagination fails me. I know! So does mine! He laughs and shakes his head. But there's something else that hasn't failed you. Wait, I just remembered something. I'm the police. Uh-huh. The young man is bursting with anticipation. Uh, nothing. Me being the police isn't going to help us. Oh. Yeah, I can't help you with this right now. I need something else. Something extra. Yeah! Are you a thought reader? No nation, but transnation! No war, but class war! So you're not a thought reader, you're a communist. He's not a communist, it's just something he likes to yell. He picked it up from a tape jockey at the Palaceum. She was a communist, though. Yeah! With the rebel yell! Does that mean you're a thought reader? Don't be a lunatic. Of course he isn't. Jermaine here just yells random things. 
Odds are, sooner or later, one of them will come off as fault greedy. Yeah! Revachon imperative! Unless you were thinking Revachon imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling. I know what you mean. You're right. I wasn't thinking that. Hardcore superstar! Yeah, best not to be a communist. Having extreme views on issues is detrimental to understanding all sides. Oh sure, I can do that. If you want that, I can avoid taking a stand. <laughs> he nods. Please don't turn him into a moralist. I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah, don't be a moralist. The path requires a sensible examination of all nuances unattainable to most people. Ah! He yells. You guess Egghead won't become a moralist after all. Uh, tell me something else, Egghead. Yeah! Is your real name Jermaine? Dark Hard Hardcore! Jermaine Egghead! Um, basically, yes it is. Why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs are for love! L'amour, la compassion, la... 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 discipline? Love! In a woman's lungs. Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid. This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on. Cause I've never loved someone like you before. He suddenly yells, and the world seems to stop. A dopamine surge accompanies the words. It feels like electricity flowing down your scalp, dissipating into your neck. Feels good. Like a spark of life in that moribund sponge you call your body. All right, uh, goodbye, Egghead. All right, here comes the night. All right, let's see if we can boost our physical instrument to pass this check. We have plus two from not wearing a shirt. What else do we got? I think that's it. All right, well, there's still like an 80% chance. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes, lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Good morning! Yeah! Pump it up! Pump it up! Pump it up! He shouts, apparently unaware of the time of day. Maybe your body can tell you what Arno Van Eyck's jam is missing, to make it harder core. You know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate. In your heart that's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move, like he's about to turn the volume down. But that would be ridiculous. And a melody. A good melody is what makes the song really stick, so you can't get it out of your head anymore. A point at your head. Wow, okay. We should stop with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know. I was thinking you would know. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. He feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future of dance music. All right. I'll see if I come up with something on my own. A citizen investigation. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Van H's jam. Yeah, maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! He yells Egghead. Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes. But what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, 
and agency intertwined. Would I fit into the art world? I mean... Have you looked in the mirror, Lanky? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, with that beard and those clothes. Disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. Hold on. Is architecture also art? Of course not. It's autism. Box drawing. Masturbation with a ruler and a sextant or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Wait, what about music? Is it art? Only the most experimental kind. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Wait, but don't I have to be 100% cop to get the case finished and all that? Quit being so indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. Okay, 50% art critic is what's needed to uh, free me from rote repetition. So be it. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals off the street, you must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery, the trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. Hi again. As always. Huh? All right, we can get out of there. That music was starting to grate, grate my nerves a bit. Just a non-stop in the background. Alright, let's read this, and then we'll talk to her about the Crab Man in the next episode. Let's see. Actual art degree. So lose one perception, came and look at this crap. Yeah, it's another copo type. The worst one. The most savage and brutal. The art cop. Nothing is good enough for him. Everything is crap. You have to employ an armada of object adjectives to depict and demean the mediocrity of the works and visual institutions around you. Really flex that critical muscle. Until the vocabulary for punishing mediocrity becomes second nature. Here we go. So I'm actually thinking that this would be a good one to get rid of. Because we don't get use out of this endurance. All endurance white checks unlocked. That only works for the ones that we've uh, already tried and failed. So... I'm going to forget this one. And internalize the actual art degree. Alright, I'm going to call the episode here. I'm going to take off this hat real fast because I can't stand it. And in the next episode, we'll speak to Estelle again about the Crab Man and I guess investigate the church until about, well, I guess it's almost 9, 9 p.m talk to her then we'll probably head back to the whirling and rags and do karaoke and check up that wall uh, just south of um, skull I forgot her name skull something either way thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next one